Hey, we're shaking everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Orange Bloods Texas Football Channel. I'm Jeff Ketchum. That is Anwar Richardson. And oh man, we're talking Texas National Championship team of 2005 today. And just how many players from the current 2022 Texas Longhorns could play on the 2D for the national championship team, which is, you know, creeping up on nearly 20 years ago and making me feel really old. Before we get into that, though, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, get notifications, prepare yourself to leave comments in the comments section. Uh, when, you know, you hear something and you want to respond to. On war, I think one of the things that's really interesting in this debate is it's not a question of who on the team could play and start on the national championship team. It's how many players from the current team could get on the two deep for the 2005 national championship team. And I'm stunned that so few players seemingly exist in the minds of current Texas fans. There were a lot of people that just wanted to say two dudes and that was pretty much it. And I think that's, before we get too deep in this, I just think that's crazy talking way off. It'll be interesting. And, and about, you know, this video, I'm definitely going to defer to you uh, a lot because you covered that 2005 team. You covered the guys, guys, probably as recruits, as they developed, you know, and I'm everything else. Long ass time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I will have to, I will have to defer a little bit to the resident historian, but I do have to, I have to think, you know, the general, yeah, I put this thing out there on Twitter and really this whole thing originated. I, I'd love to give the person props. I think you got, was it a buy or sell question catch that, that prompted this in your column? No, somebody just asked me about it a couple of weeks ago. And it was, I, I mentioned it was coming out of the modcast that we did a few years ago mm -hmm. or a few, a few weeks ago when I mentioned that I thought a lot of the guys on the defense had NFL upside, even if they haven't been good yet, right? Like yeah. whenever we talk about a guy uh, like Alfred Collins, you know, a guy with this huge pedigree and talent that seems undeniable, but it hasn't happened yet. And then coming out of that conversation, someone asked me how many guys from this team I thought could make the two deep for the national championship. Because the, the idea would be, if you're good enough to be on a two deep for a national championship team, then you got to be pretty. Then you got to be pretty good. Yeah, I mean that was that's the genesis of all this entire thing. Was I think when this conversation is over with, we'll find that there are more good players mm -hmm. on this team that could play for a team like that that are just in a completely different scenario where they're playing on a team the opposite of that. And I think it will also point to the fact that this is a team that has, I think, more good talent and not enough than most people realize, even if not great or elite, which is one of the clouds hovering above this team, is it, it has a B. John Robinson and an Xavier Worthy, and then there's a long list of guys not performing nearly at those levels. So, yeah, I was going to say, so could we start with what, what I would believe to be the two – guys that I think would be able to be in there, but I'd like to see what you think of that. B. John Robinson, uh, Xavier Worthy. Now, Jamal Charles was was on that team, right? So but we're talking Jamal like- Jamal started as a true freshman in 2005. So, so we have to think about these players as to who they were mm -hmm. at that exact time. Like, we can't say Jamal, Hall of Famer Jamal Charles, right? Or yeah, sure. former NFL All-Pro running back Jamal Charles. We have to, he was- Freshman starting running back Jamal Charles, who I think was a better football player as a freshman than Bijan. Just he was just better for me. Um, now who else was in the who else would be in that running back room in the conversation? It was stacked. Okay. <laughs> okay. It was stacked. Behind him, you had an older Selvin Young who played a number of years in the NFL. And then you had Ramonce Taylor, who would have been a sophomore that year. And it really emerged as a big play weapon for that team. So it really was a three-headed monster at running back. The fourth running back on that team mm -hmm. was Henry Melton. Oh, wow. 
I think if I look, I'm doing off this completely off of. I think Henry Melton scored eight touchdowns that year. Wow. Like, Mm-hmm. This team averaged 50 points a game. Yeah, so, yeah. So they were just rolling dudes in and out. I think B. John Robinson gets on the two deep. Like, he's he's better than Selvin and even Ramonts would have been. But it would have been a little bit like this running back room where Jaden Blue comes in, and it's there are four guys that all think that, that, you know, we look at like a Jonathan Brooks, and we're like, that guy could take snaps away – you know, from even a Roshan Johnson this year or, you know, somebody of that, because the talent underneath these guys is so good. I think you have to go back to 2005 since the running back room has been this deep. Mm -hmm. And it is the real, I think it's the hardest conversation to have because sliding Bijan makes a two deep, but you got to push some really good players out of the way. And I think there would be some people who would say, B. John Robinson, now the All-America candidate versus Jamal Charles, precocious, dynamic freshman. You could, I I would at least listen to a conversation where somebody said B. John would be the starting running back on that team. I just need people to remember how good Jamal Charles was. Yeah, I mean... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, you know, Jamal, as I'm looking it up now, catch, you know, it's interesting. Jamal runs for 878 that season with 11 touchdowns. Uh, Selvin Young rushes for 461 with eight. And Henry Melton, uh, you, you're pretty close. Uh, golly, there's a lot of running backs here. Henry Melton g- rushes uh, for 432 and 10 touchdowns. He's better and, than I thought. Yeah, and, and Taylor – Runs for five thirteen and twelve touchdowns. No, they, like, so I mean, what it was just like everyone touching the ball in the second half? I mean, was that was that how monstrous it was? I mean, the again, ball got most of his work early on, and Melton would get a lot of fourth quarters. Mm-hmm. A future NFL defensive lineman who got a second contract. Yes, <laughs> I like, remember him. A, a good player. Yes, uh, was the fourth string running back, and like you know, was getting getting. Henry Melton played at Ohio State that year, second game of the season. Jamal Charles started that game. Mm. And, you know, not even – he was just – Jamal Charles was a special football player. And – but you know what? Like I said, I will listen. I absolutely will listen to B. John Robinson and the case that he would start over Jamal Charles, taking the junior version of B. John versus – the freshman version of Jamal Charles. I think what's much easier on war mm-hmm. is Xavier Worthy walks into the team and is the number one receiver. I mean, let me, you know, go through the, the names here. I've, I've got, you know, David Thomas. Who's your starting tight end. So okay. Like, so, okay. That's, yeah. That's settled. Okay. Help me. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, F5, just for those who know, I wasn't here in 2005, so I'm just going – I'm reading out stats. It was, a, it, was long, it was like a decade in between your arrival and this team, so it's been a that. while. Yeah, so all right. I, I got Lima Swede catch. Yes. The, uh, 36 receptions for 545 and five touchdowns. Uh, help me out. Billy Pittman. Billy Pittman is your, starting, is your slot receiver. Okay. And there's a conversation to be had about – I. We'll, we'll get to the wide receiver position, like the totality of it here in a second. But Billy Pittman was a starting slot receiver for the 05 team. Okay. And he, he's he got 34 for, for 750 and, and five touchdowns. Yep. Um, and then you got, and you've got a, a young Quan uh, at, at 15 receptions, 270 and, and two touchdowns. But Quan was a freshman uh, that year, uh, catch. Yep. So those are those are kind of looks like the, the main guys, unless you feel like I miss miss one. No, off the top of my head, you know, Tony Jeffrey was a starting receiver the year before, wouldn't have been on that team. I think Brian Carter was a starter on that 2005 team. I'm pretty oh, sure. I don't, I don't. Am I, yes, he was. Uh, he well, he's 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 listed, he's got 18 receptions. He was two, your other starting receiver. 263. And what I'm looking at is just overall stats. I don't have a, a starting lineup right now. So, so I'll, I'll work on that. So Xavier starts easily, easily. I'm, I, I shudder to think what Vince Young 
would have been able to do with a receiver like Xavier Worthy to throw the football to. The thing is, I think you can make a case that Jordan Whittington is a better football player than Billy Pittman. Mm, okay. And I think that you can make a case that Isaiah Nayor plays at least gets down the two deep. I mean, mm-hmm. really all we're talking about at wide receiver is two receivers. You're talking about Limus, who makes the law. I'll, I'll put Limus in the starting lineup. And then you're talking about Billy Pittman. And I'm just telling you right now that I think Jordan Whittington, if he stays healthy, is probably playing ahead of Billy Pittman. He was a, I think Jordan Whittington was better than Billy Pittman, who had an awesome senior season in 2005. So I, um, I think there are actually three receivers right now on the roster that all could make a two deep in 2005. And I don't think most Texas fans think of the current roster like that. They've romanticized the 2005 team to such a degree that they don't realize that one of the starting wide receivers had less than 20 catches. Mm-hmm. I mean, catch for, for a wild card in this conversation, though, it, just to throw just for fun and, and shits and giggles, where do you put Isaiah Nayor in that kind of category? I'm putting him in the 2D. Okay. I'm okay. saying that we, we were through the running back and the wide receivers, and I got four guys on this team. This year's team off those two positions that make it too deep on the 2005 team. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think in a vacuum, if it was just Nayer, Nayer starts on the 2005 team. I think Whittington starts on the 2005 team. And I think that obviously Xavier Worthy starts, not all three of them, because if, if it was a world where I had to pick the best three, I would probably go Swede, Worthy, and then specifically in the slot, it becomes a Billy Pittman versus Jordan Whittington conversation. And I'd probably take Jordan Whittington with all due respect to Billy Pittman, who didn't play on Sundays, right? Mm-hmm. We're not, if, if it sounds like, I think Jordan Whittington is eventually going to be a Sunday player. And that was not what Billy Pittman turned out to be. At, go ahead. No, I was just going to, I was just going to ask you from a d- tight end position. Do you keep Thomas at, at, at tight end? Oh, God, yeah. And then is any is Jaleel anybody else behind at this moment catch or they'd all they'd all be the backup over a true freshman in Jermichael Finley or okay. who did who redshirted that year if I'm not mistaken and if he didn't if he, I think he redshirted and then you had Neil Tweedy who is just a guy mm-hmm. so you could probably pick any of those dudes off of this year's tight in this year's tight end room all the way down to Juan Davis, and I might put them as a second-string tight end if it wasn't a matter of just choosing. If we're choosing the best two, yeah, you'd probably go Billingsley after Thomas. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. What, I think what were you going to say, Coach? Let's not forget quarterback. Oh, yes. Because okay. I think Quinn Ewers is, is no, no Texas fan, not a single Texas fan, is going to stand on a table and say that Matt Norgren would be the backup quarterback over Quinn Ewers. Mm-hmm. Nobody. Mm-hmm. Nobody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to get into a conversation about Matt Norgren, the quarterback, yeah. but his most famous moment on war was playing against Baylor in 2005 when he scored like a 35-yard touchdown and right. midway through the run, he dribbled the football. <laughs> Nobody touched him. He just like started fumbling it and it bounced on the ground and he scooped it back up and he just kept on running. Oh, oh, it was a fumble. So he did he wasn't like showboating. He was in the open field. <laughs> he, he fumbled, but it bounced oh. right back to him. Okay. It is the highlight of his career. Okay. Uh, Interesting. The right. thing is, I think when you get to the offensive line, mm-hmm. I mean, none of the guys would be starters. You're talking about the best offensive line in the history of Texas football, all NFL level, all big 12 players. But that offensive line wasn't very deep in 2005. So probably a Jake majors could be the backup center. Um, You know, junior angle allows probably a guard backup on a two deep. And then outside of that, I don't know. Like, I don't know how we, I don't know how to talk about the freshmen coming in. But I would say, at a, I would say conservatively, 
two offensive linemen could be the back because the 2005 offensive line did not have depth. It, it, it had some dudes that just weren't very good. So I think, I think you're talking about two guys on the offensive line. Again, people on Twitter responding to this question, thinking that only two guys could crack it too deep. And I can make a case that there's like a dozen guys that, you know, in a vacuum could all play as at least, but only Xavier Worthy and potentially Bijan as starters. But as backups, yeah, they could. Hmm. Okay, so you would definitely again, like you said, it's and I think I, I like that distinction. It is more about the two deep than it is starters. So catch as we go right now as we start to wrap up the offense. What what's our total number that we've got now in offense, catch? Quinn. Okay. Bijan. Mm-hmm. Uh and, and I don't think any of the other running backs crack that 2005 running back room. Just okay. I didn't it didn't get that's a really good room. But I'm, it's weird. I'm going to argue for Jake Majors and Junior Angelow, and I won't argue for Roshan, which seems – but they're, the competition there was the strongest of any position group in this discussion. Uh, but two there, three wide receivers is five. Uh, Jaleel Billingsley is six. Mm-hmm. Junior Angelow and Jake Majors make eight. Okay. Fascinating. I don't think – I don't think – the majority of people upon the onset of this conversation would have pegged eight. I think well, there's uh, no way. Yeah. And, and in fact, you know, whatever, you know, what our friends, what our followers on, uh, you know, Twitter, uh, you know, David Allen, you know, dot Texas. Uh, I think he had said, you know, thought B, B. John and Xavier and that was it. And then you responded back to him saying wrong it was in, you know, it's a fun dialogue he's a good guy like there's no oh, absolutely yeah there's no there's no beef with any of those with him or anybody else so um but it's such a stark it's such a stark contrast of opinions and just for texas fans watching this video right when i say junior angle allen um and and jake majors probably make it too deep the players that would have been on the two deep that year if i'm not mistaken would have been a really young Dallas Griffin at center or Brett Valdez, Mike Garcia at guard. Um, I mean, th- this just wasn't this. Will Winston was a tackle. Like these weren't full. These just, it wasn't a, a deep team at that position. I think the best offensive lineman on this team could have been backups on the 2005 team. Mm-hmm. And if you want to argue with me on that, you don't remember that 2005 team's offensive line very well. None of those dudes were starters. Of the, not, not, you know, I mean, Dallas Griffin eventually becomes a starter, but, you know, he wasn't uh, a plus player at that point. 